Hello and welcome to Fall 22. Uh, this is the welcome or introductory video for Finance 3680. Uh, both the sections 105 and 305 are uh, grouped into the same uh, course, uh, so you are, will be seeing this video if you are in either one of those sections. Uh, this course is being offered as an online, fully asynchronous course, meaning we will not be meeting at any point. Uh, we will not be holding regular Zoom lectures. Uh, the videos have been pre-recorded and posted, uh, and I will be available at any point uh, throughout the semester to meet with you, either in person or on Zoom, uh, to discuss any issues, problems, concerns, or just to chat. Um, you can uh, find my uh, office uh, listed here. It's Peacock Hall 3088 if you happen to be in Boone and you're just taking this class online for uh, work reasons or something like that. Um, or you can uh, find my email right below that here on the syllabus, uh, holcombaj2 at appstate, um, and uh, you can send me an email at any point in time, again, to uh, just ask a question if you'd like to do it over email or to set up an appointment, uh, and we can uh, happy to meet on Zoom to uh, do anything like that. Um, please uh, only use my email address to contact me. Uh, there is a phone in my office, but I don't know the number to it, and I don't tend to answer it. If it rings, it usually just scares me. Uh, so uh, email is the easiest way to get contact with me. Uh, I check my email all the time throughout the day, uh, and I respond uh, as fast as I can. Um, uh, so the purpose of this uh, video is really just to talk about expectations. We're going to talk about what you should expect from the course, what I expect from you, and finally, what you should expect from me as the professor. So we're going to walk through the syllabus. I'm going to show you all the things that you need. Uh, we're going to go through the As You Learn page. Uh, I'm going to show you where to access everything. Uh, and you can use this as a resource to come back later on the course if you've forgotten, for instance, where the exams are found or what kind of calculator you need or whether there's a book or, or what kind of schedule there is for the homeworks or anything like that. It's all going to be here. I'm going to leave this up all semester. Uh, so you can serve this as sort of a video, a video syllabus, so to speak. Okay. Uh, so we're just going to go through the syllabus here one by one, and then we'll pop around to all those other places as we get there. All right. Now some of this stuff is pro forma, meaning we have to have it in here. Uh, so I'll be really brief. The other stuff is more important. It's relevant to us. So um, that's where it's important to, uh, to be paying attention. Okay. So the prerequisites for this course, if you were able to sign up for the course, then you've met the prerequisites. The important things that I want to highlight in terms of prereqs, though, are particularly on the accounting side. So you need accounting one and two. Um, not that this class is accounting, but finance and accounting are very closely linked. And the concepts that you learned in accounting, you're going to need in finance. So this isn't just a boilerplate prerequisite. This is something that we actually use. Now, we'll do a brief refresher in the very first lecture, chapter two, where we cover the things from accounting that we'll need to know. But just as a sort of brief uh, reminder here, uh, the stuff that we need to know really concerned the financial statements. So ba balance sheet, income statement, cash flow statement. Uh, if you have zero memory of what any of those three terms mean, then perhaps this is not the right course for you. If you need some refresher, you've got some time to brush up, go look through your accounting notes. You are not going to need super complicated uh, um, or detailed information. We are not going to be, you know, building a really detailed, complicated income statement, um, but you will need a very simple, basic one, and you will have to be able to do it on your own. Um, the math stuff is uh, less uh, relevant in the sense that we are not going to do any super difficult math here. So the highest level of math in this class is algebra. We're going to do a little bit of statistics at the end, but it uses nothing but algebra. Um, and so we will be doing a lot of math, however. So you need to be comfortable doing math. You need to be able to be comfortable doing algebra and doing it pretty quickly because this class is more or less all of math, right? So all the problems that you'll be doing, everything that you'll see on the exam is going to be a math problem in one form or another. Now, lots of this is going to be done using a calculator, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But the understanding, for you to understand what we're doing with the calculator, you're going to have to understand the math. Okay, So you don't need to know calculus, but you need to be pretty comfortable doing algebra and doing it really quickly. Okay? Otherwise, uh, as long as you feel comfortable with those two things, then you should be good to go for this class. Okay? 
Now, by and large, this is the introductory corporate finance class, right? So this is uh, what this course is about is how corporations, major companies, think about and finance their projects, their investments, their decisions. And so we are not going to be doing a lot of talking about personal finances like your taxes or investing in a 401k account or Dogecoin, right? We are going to be talking about how Apple decides to uh, finance a major investment in a new product space, things like that. Okay, now, where appropriate, I will do my best to link concepts from personal and corporate finance that are uh, closely related so that we can get a more personal feel for how some of these decisions might be made. But don't expect this class to be a personal finance course, okay, because it's not. Uh, text. I don't require a text, okay, I don't require a book. I do broadly follow the structure of the book listed here in the syllabus, Fundamentals of Corporate Finance by Ross, Westerfield, and Jordan. I think it's up to like the 14th edition now, officially. It is available at the bookstore. I think you have access to it uh, online as well through the bookstore um, because I list it as a book for this course. Um, so you can uh, you can check online to get a, a um, an online version of this book. Uh, I don't use the book. I don't assign readings from the book. I don't use the Connect um, uh, the McGraw-Hill Connect system to do homework. Uh, I think books are a scam. I think they overcharge. I think most students don't use them. Everything that you'll need in this class is contained in my lecture videos, the slides that I post, and the examples and notes that we work. I have taken a lot of time to make my own homework uh, assignments that are online and provided via as you learn. You will not need anything related to the book in order to pass this class. If, however, you like to use the book or read the book, and I'm one of those people, I, I like to read the book, it's how I learn. Um, if you're one of those people, buy an old cheap copy of this book. You can find them on Amazon, like second editions for $30 or, or less. And the book hasn't changed that much. They, the, the topics and the information certainly haven't changed. And you can absolutely get by with whatever version, old version, online version, anything you want to do, uh, if you want to make use of that. Or if uh, you uh, you can come talk to me and, and if you feel like you need the book but you can't get a hold of it for some reason, please just reach out and we'll figure something out. Okay. On the other hand, you are going to need a calculator. Right? So the calculator that you'll need in this course, uh, or the one that I will teach, uh, is a financial calculator. And this is different from your standard calculator. So a scientific, just basic scientific calculator will not handle what we need, doesn't have the right functions. Any of the TI graphing calculators are fine. Uh, they all have the financial functions. Uh, however, uh, I have never required the graphing calculator. Uh, I think it's a great option. I've never required it just because it's more expensive than the generic finance calculator. Okay, So uh, that is what is listed here. Uh, the calculator that I require or that uh, I suggest is the TIBA2 Plus or plus professional. It is the TI uh, financial calculator. Um, again, all of this is on all of the TI graphing calculators as well. Uh, however, the calculator that I will teach is this one. This is the TI BA2 plus. So I will teach it. I will use it in my examples. I will have videos showing you how to use it. Um, it's a, uh, it's, you can't get through this class without it. Okay. So there are some of the functions and some of the formulas that we use that are not uh, analytically solvable, meaning you can't solve it by hand. The calculator will solve it faster because it's going to guess and check the answer, and you don't want to do that on your own. Okay, so we're going to use this calculator. I'm going to show you how to use it. Uh, I recommend that you just buy one right at the start of the semester um, because you will want to get familiar with it because you will need to be familiar with it and good with it in order to uh, do the homework problems and do the exams. Now, you are welcome to use any calculator you want, as long as it has the financial functions. So there are calculators from HP, there are calculators that are just floating around online um, that have the business functions. Uh, there are calculators, again, the graphing calculators all have these functions. However, I don't teach you how to use those. I don't have any videos showing you how to use them. I am fairly familiar using the graphing calculators, and I will attempt in my lecture videos to point out places where you can use them and what you should be using. But 
I am far from an expert in every graphing calculator or every calculator ever made. So keep that in mind. If you want to be, if you want to use the calculator that you have, that's fine. You will just have to make sure that you are on YouTube, wherever it takes, figure out how to, how to do everything on your graphing calculator. If you don't want to mess with that, you just want to take the easy route, buy one of these. They're like 30 bucks on Amazon. It's the cheapest thing available. Find a used one from a friend who's taken this class before and you'll be ready to go and you'll know that I can help you if you have a problem and you'll have videos sh showing you how to do everything in this class using one of these calculators. Okay, so this is what we're looking for, the TIBA2+. Now, uh, homework problems. Uh, we uh, are going to do all the homework. It's all built by me on As You Learn. Uh, I'll go through it as I, we go through the As You Learn page so that you can see what it looks like and what we're doing. Um, but uh, you won't need anything else, no access code, no nothing like that. It'll just be posted on As You Learn. You do the homework, you turn it. Okay. There are additional readings posted on As You Learn. These are articles that are real world relevant examples of the things, the concepts, and theories that we're talking about in class. So as I go through life and I read the Wall Street Journal or New York Times or something, and I find an article that's relevant, I try to post it there. I am not going to test you on things that are explicitly in the articles. I am not going to ask you to write up a summary of any of the articles. These are purely there to help you gain some more understanding about the concepts, which is going to help you on the exams and the homework. Okay. Schedule. Uh, now, this is uh, an online asynchronous course as such. There is no fixed schedule except for the due dates on the homeworks and the project and the, the exam dates, right? So those are all fixed. You must do those by those days and times. Everything else is up to you. Now below in the syllabus and what I'll spend the next 10 minutes talking about is a schedule that I would give as if this class was meeting in person, right? So it's gonna meet two days a week and I have the schedule laid out that way. You will have to find some way, and you guys have been taking online courses for a while now, so this isn't your first rodeo do whatever is successful for you or has proved successful for you. My recommendation is that you stick to a schedule that will work for you. And you can follow this schedule. This is the one we would follow if this was in person. And this has uh, been successfully followed by uh, you know thousands of students before you. Okay. That being said, do everything at the pace or in the schedule that is going to work for you. Right? But this class moves really, really fast. It is not easy. The concepts are new, they come at you quick, and we move on before you've had a chance to settle with them. And this class builds on itself, meaning the stuff we talk about in the first couple of weeks are, is going to be used and reused and rehashed and added upon as we move through the rest of the semester. What that means is that there is very little time for you to fall behind. You cannot wait until, see, the first exam here is on the 21st of September. That's a, almost exactly a month from from now. You cannot wait until the 29th, or, or sorry, the 20th, and expect to be able to watch all the videos and uh, be ready for the exam. For one, you're going to miss two homework assignments, but for two, there's just too much material and it's too new. Okay, So I would encourage you strongly to find a schedule, even if it's just broadly keeping to this schedule. We move through about one chapter per week. So if you are just making it through one chapter's worth of videos and examples and doing the homework every week, you are going to be on track. Okay? If you fall behind, it is going to be hard to keep up. Now, this schedule is based on a Monday-Wednesday class. That's what my in-person classes are, so I'm just leaving that here for you. Again, do whatever works for you. Just don't fall behind. Okay? We move through about one, uh, one chapter per class. So, for instance, this first week of class, We'll expect to try to get through chapter two, then three, five, and six. The exams are going to be held on the 24 hour period on the date that they're listed here, right? So the first exam is September 21st. It will be available from midnight of the, uh, you know, midnight of the 21st to, or of the 20th to midnight of the 21st, Eastern time, okay? So, what, as soon as the clock strikes midnight on the 20th, you'll be able to take it. As soon as the clock strikes midnight 24 hours later, it's going to close. There are three exams and a final, and you can see they're all listed here on bold. The next one's the November 2nd. The third one is December 5th. The final is December 12th. You must take all four exams. 
uh, and we'll talk more about the exams and the grading schedule as we go along. Okay, so but you will need you are required to take all four. On the other column here on the right hand side is the homework assignments. The homeworks are always listed on the day they're due. They cover one chapter at a time, and there is approximately one homework for each chapter that we cover in this class. So there are eight total homeworks. So the first homework covers chapter two. We'll finish chapter two by the 29th. And the first homework covering chapter two is due on the 31st, which is the next class in this schedule, right? So the first homework is due August 31st by midnight Eastern time on the day it's listed. The second homework covers chapter five. It is due by midnight Eastern time on Wednesday, September 14th, so on and so on and so forth. There is also an Excel assignment. It is a broader range, so I give it, and then it's not due for about three weeks. It is not a huge assignment. It should take you no longer than any of the other homeworks, and it is basically just a homework assignment given in Excel. Right? I give you extra time in case you are not familiar with Excel already. That gives you the time you need to familiarize yourself with Excel, either through some example videos uh, or tutorial videos, uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about that when we get uh, into the As You Learn page. Okay. There are going to be three breaks in this class. Again, this is asynchronous, so it's not super uh, important to y'all. We'll have fall break, uh, we'll have Thanksgiving break, and we've, we would have a Labor Day normally on the Monday, so this schedule takes account for all of those. I uh, encourage you to take the breaks as if you were in person, because everybody needs a break. Um, but make sure you uh, are keeping up otherwise. Okay. If you've got any questions about this schedule, or anything like that, uh, you can, uh, of course, uh, obviously reach out to me. Okay. Uh, I This schedule is fixed, by the way. Um, so the schedule is fixed. Uh, the exam dates are fixed. Uh, the homework dates are all fixed. This You can put this into your calendars and run with it. We'll talk, talk a little bit way. Uh, I'll talk in a little bit about an easy way that, as you learn, lets you export this schedule into your own calendar. Uh, so that you've got everything already listed and you have no excuses about forgetting uh, because I have uh, pretty strict policies about that kind of thing. Okay, okay. Uh, so here's the attendance. I've already said a lot about that. I will not uh, keep harping on it. The grading. Uh, the course grade is going to be weighted as followed. Each of the first three exams are worth 20% of your final grade. The homework and the Excel assignment is worth 15% combined. And that is evenly split. So each of the first eight homeworks combined are worth 7.5%. And the Excel project is worth 7.5%. Right? So the homework assignments are not worth very much altogether. They're worth less than one point total. Right? The homework in this class is not designed to hurt you. It is only designed to encourage you to practice. This is a math class. All of these problems need to be practiced. The more you practice, the better you will do. I can promise you that. This, the grades in this class are strongly correlated with the people who do well and do all of the homework assignments. Okay? So the homework assignments are not worth very much. If you miss one, if you have to skip one, if you get sick, if you have too much work to do, you can skip one. It's one point. Right? It's the cumulative nature of it that is really going to affect your ultimate grade. The Excel assignment, again, not a huge project, but I'm giving you a chance to make some of those potential missed homeworks back by making basically one of the homework assignments worth as much as all the rest of them. That way, you get some easy points. Okay? The final exam is worth 25%, the, re the remaining 25% of your final grade. Okay? Now, the if the lowest score on the first three exams is lower than the final score, the final will replace that grade, and it will essentially count twice. And I will show you an example of that uh, in a little bit. Right. All the exams are going to be given and proctored online using the Respondus Lockdown Browser and the Respondus Monitor. What that means is that you are going to have to take the exam on your computer. The Respondus Lockdown Browser will shut down everything else on your computer. It will only let you be in the exam during the length of the exam. Uh, the monitor requires a uh, webcam, which is the other technology thing that you are required to have in this course, a calculator and a webcam. 
uh, the webcam will stay on during the entire exam and it will uh, watch to make sure that you are participating without cheating. Uh, so that is what we are using. That's what the department requires us to use in this course. Uh, so that's how we're doing. Okay. You will have to download the Respondus browser and then use it during the exam. And I'll talk a little bit more about that when I get onto As You Learn. Okay. Uh, the grade distribution is the standard distribution, meaning an A is 90 to 100, B is 80 to 90, so on and so forth. Uh, I assign plus grades for scores in the top two points of each decile, meaning an 88 and an 89 is a B plus, a 78 and a 79 is a C plus. I do not give any minuses. I think that's bullshit. Uh, important to note that if you are a finance and banking or risk management and insurance major, you must get a C or better in this course to take any courses afterwards. This is the introduction to finance course. Everything else in the major that has a finance number in front of it, FIN something, you must have a C uh, in this course in order to register for one of those. Right? C minus or lower will not essentially will not pass you uh, out of this course. For everyone else that isn't finance and banking or risk management and insurance major, a D will get a degree, just like everything else. Okay. Exams. Okay. Some policy about the exams. Uh, one, I don't allow any makeup exams, uh, and I don't let you uh, reschedule an exam or shift an exam to a different day. Uh, if you miss uh, or have to miss one of the exams, then the final will replace it. Right. This stops me from having to be the judge, jury, and executioner on whose mom actually died and whether you were really sick and any kind of shit like that. Okay. So if you uh, have to miss an exam for any reason, doesn't matter. You don't have to tell me even if you don't want to. If you got to miss it, you got to miss it. You'll have a placeholder score there, uh, uh, just an empty score there until you take the final, and then the final will count for both grades. Right. If you manage to make all three exams, uh, then the final will just replace the lowest grade, but it will never hurt you. The final doesn't automatically replace a grade. It only does it if it will help you. Okay. Um, you must take the final exam. That's university policy for uh, undergraduate exam courses. Whether your, other whether your other faculty stick to that is their own business. Okay. You do need a financial calculator. You're going to have to use it, and you will need a webcam because these exams must be uh, proctored. Uh, disability resources. If you have uh, contacted with ODR and you have any uh, accommodations from ODR, uh, they should have let me know already. If they haven't, please reach out so, so that we can let you know whether that's extra time on the exams or um, uh, uh, notes or, or anything like that. Um, please reach out um, uh, so that we can get that settled before it becomes an issue. Okay. Academic integrity. All this says is don't cheat got a lot of people try and we've had a lot of people try in online courses thinking they can post their answers to JAG, uh, questions to uh, homework help or, or anything like that. Okay. We have ways to check all of that. We've turn, I've turned in uh, several people over the past couple of semesters for cheating. Uh, don't be one of them. You'll fail the class. If you've done it multiple times, you'll be kicked out of the university. Uh, it's the least fun part of this job. And of course, uh, it's not something that we want to deal with. Every one of you that signed up for this class has a great chance at passing, uh, and you have as much help as you could possibly want or need, uh, and so uh, avail yourself of all that help uh, instead of trying to cheat your way through it. Uh, withdraw from the class. You guys know the drop dates. Uh, you know all the procedures. Just make sure that if you want to drop the class, you, uh, you do it in, in good time. All right, that's it for the syllabus. Okay, so let's uh, go through the As You Learn page a little bit, and uh, that should be the end of everything. Okay. So here's your As You Learn page. You guys will click in from your dashboard. You're looking for FIN 3680. I have combined both sections of this course into one As You Learn page uh, so that it's easier on me to keep track of everything. So whether you are in the 105 cor uh, section or the 305 section, you should default into this same page. Right. So. For some of you, that might mean that you've got an extra, just sort of empty placeholder course. Um, uh, so make sure that you're coming to the right place. Uh, right up here is this welcome video. All right, so 
uh, a little bit recursive here, but if you click on this video, it will take you to uh, a YouTube video um, where you'll find this welcome video. So it's right here at the top. Okay, and we're just going to talk about what is down here. Announcements, this is where I'm going to be communicating with you. I will send out an email probably uh, twice a week, um, but at the very least once a week in an effort to try and keep you guys on schedule. Right. So what I will do is send out an email every week saying, hey, if you were keeping to the schedule on the syllabus, this is what you uh, should be watching. These are the videos of the chapters that you should be watching. Here's when the next homework is due, and here's when the exam is due. This is my main method of communicating with y'all. Uh, so I'm going to send out an email pretty regularly saying, hey, keep up. Here's what you should be watching. Here's what you should be doing. Uh, here's what's coming up in the future, uh, and, and here's some things that you might need to know about. So this is where your uh, main communication for me is going to get. It's going to send out an email to you. It's also just going to remain posted here in the announcements folder. This next file is called Check My Grade, and this is an Excel file. It looks like this. You can download it, and it will automatic automatically check and calculate your grade at the end of the semester or at any point during the semester you can input your all your grades and see what you uh, where you stand okay so I have a really strict grading policy meaning I don't round grades I don't round exam grades I don't curve grades I don't curve exam grades I don't change your grade in any way shape or form whatever you get will be exactly what you earned okay with the exception that the final can replace the lowest of your first the exam grades and be a very powerful way for you to improve your own score by proving that you have learned the material in the course by the time the final gets around. Right? Now about 95% of my students make use of this, right? So they do bad on one of the exams in the first three exams and they do better enough better on the final that replaces that poor score showing on the first on one of the exams and they improve their score. Right? So the way that this thing works is you just type in the scores exactly as you got them. Right. So I'm going to show you a, say, worst case scenario. Um, let's say you get a, a 40 on the first exam. You just totally bomb it. Okay. And then you uh, pick it back up. You improve your scores. You get an 89 and, and then a 90. And then you get, a, say, 85 on the final exam. If you uh, do most of the homework, that's 920 out of 1050, that's about an A total on the homework, and you do pretty well in the Excel project, you get an 85. This will automatically calculate your grade. It'll automatically tell you which of the exams was replaced by the final. Right? So this is a huge uh, statement in Excel, checking which of the first three exam scores is the lowest, replacing it with the final grade if it is the lowest, and calculating the final grade. So you can bomb one of these exams, do pretty well on the rest of them, and still get a B. You, I have seen someone get this bad of a score on the first exam and get an A in the class. This particular woman did this, which I'm not saying is super easy to do. She really knocked it out of the park. But you can totally bomb one of the exams in this class and still squeak out uh, and still get an A, still get whatever you want. You can do pretty poorly on set two exams and uh, and still squeak out uh, a pretty good grade as long as you turn it around. Right? Now this is all automatic, so if I change exam two to be lower than exam one, notice that it tells me that exam two was the lowest and this is the one that's replaced. So you don't have to do any work here, you don't have to do any math here, you just plug in the grades as you see them and it'll tell you exactly what you're going to get. Right? And I don't round and I don't curve, so what you see is what you get. So keep that in mind. Okay. Uh, the next things that you'll see are a couple of just informational tools. Here's the syllabus for the class. You can access that syllabus. The syllabus is the contract between me and you. That's why we spend time like this going over it, uh, so that you know exactly what to expect, and, and you know exactly the rules that this class is going to be governed by. Um, here are, uh, th this is the link to your book. Uh, this is some links about tutoring for this course. There is tutoring available through the university and through the college for this course. Uh, and is typically old students of mine, uh, so you, or at the very least, old students who have done really well in this course before. Uh, so you have, uh, they should at least have a good understanding of, of what's going on for you. Over here on the right-hand side, it has upcoming events. This is the As You Learn calendar. It tells you 
precisely when every single scheduled event on this As You Learn course uh, happens. So tomorrow, I'm recording this on Sunday, so tomorrow, Monday, first day of class, homework one opens. Wednesday, the 31st, homework one closes at 11.59 p.m. Right? You can go to the whole calendar here by clicking on Go to Calendar. It will tell you the entire schedule for the course, already laid out, all of this stuff is scheduled. If you scroll to the bottom here, you can export this calendar to your GCAL or to your iCal. And it will have all of these dates just as events in your calendar laid out exactly. And then you never have to worry about missing anything in this class. The next section you'll see is uh, all of the lecture and lecture material. Right? So this is broken down into chapters. Right? So we are going to go through about one chapter a week. So these is lecture one. Chapter two is our first chapter. First, you'll have your uh, your uh, slides. These are the PowerPoint presentations that I would uh, that I follow in my lecture videos. So this is the chapter two lecture uh, slides. Now the slides are not um, specifically not filled with a ton of detail. They are highlights for me to hit during the lecture and they are essentially just a good way for you to structure the notes that you're going to take during the lectures and yes i would encourage you to watch the lectures and take notes just as if this was an in-person class it is going to help you significantly and has been proven to help if you write things down then there are example problems that i will work throughout the lecture so we will the way the lectures are structured is I will lecture for a little bit on a topic, then we'll take a break and we'll work an example. These videos are linked in the YouTube videos. And so, for instance, here are the chapter two video uh, example problems. So it is a problem set up with blank space underneath and then several of those problems that will work as we go through the lectures. Right? Now, I will strongly encourage you to print these out so that you can work the problems alongside me again writing them, working them, using them, has proven to be a, the most effective way to remember and learn this stuff. Okay. Next is the, the folder containing the example and lecture videos. They are broken down into about 10 minute chunks so that you can watch them uh, as you have the time or allowed, right? You don't have to Remember where in a 60 minute lecture video you left off. They're 10 minute chunks. They cover a sort of discrete topic and then they move on. All right, so there are, for instance, nine videos of parts of the lecture and then four example videos uh, covering each of those problems in that problem handout. If you click on the video, it will give you a YouTube link. You can follow the YouTube link. I don't know why it's not letting me link here. Okay, hi. Here's the YouTube uh, link. Welcome. It will uh have a lecture it will then break to the slides and i'll that, talk about the slides and we'll break apart if there are examples that we are working during that lecture uh during that part of the lecture i will uh have a link pop up here so that you can click pause this video click to the example watch the example video then come back to the lecture right so all of this is structured so that it hopefully feels almost exactly the same as is if we were taking this uh, this class in person, right? So you can watch the video, you can jump to the example, which is what I would do in person, then we come back to the lecture, uh, and you can watch the whole thing in one go if you want, okay? Again, I would be uh, very much encouraging you to watch and take notes and treat it as if you were sitting in the classroom. Below that are any of these uh, articles or um, additional reading that I uh, have provided here to try and tie what we're talking about to the real world so that you have a better understanding of how these fundamentals actually work. So in this early, uh, in this first lecture, chapter two, we're going to be talking about the rehashing or uh, sort of reviewing the accounting topics that we really need and what's really important in terms of a finance class versus an accounting class. And so I have some articles here about say some tax strategies that companies might use, which is one of the things we're going to talk about. Now I have the links here, so you can click on the link and it'll take you to the Wall Street Journal article itself. Uh, I know lots of you, or probably maybe all of you, aren't going to have a, a Wall Street Journal subscription, so I also copied them into a Word document. 
you can come click on the, the Word document and read it. None of these articles are super long. I am not going to test you explicitly on information in any of the articles. However, they are very relevant to the topics that we're going to cover in the class. And so, of course, I am testing you on those topics. And so an alternate or uh, additional information here is really useful. So you'll have that for all of the chapters. There isn't always material uh, af that we'll cover in the chapter, so there's no extra material from chapter three, just the lectures and the videos. Uh, I mean, the slides and the lecture videos. Uh, five, six, sometimes there will be Excel examples. Um, so that we're gonna work problems in Excel. Part of this class is increasing your familiarity with Excel. So they'll, they're posted here as well. So for instance, in chapter six, we're gonna talk about loan amortization which is the process by which we uh, decide what the payment on a loan would be. And so there is an Excel file here that I made that will tell you, for instance, in this one, what the payment on a house loan uh, you might get. So if you want to borrow $350,000 to buy a house and you get a certain interest rate, this is going to help you understand what the payment is. Okay, So that's here too. Um, so all of the information that you need for the class is already posted from the first lecture to the last one. Right? And, uh, and it's already right here. You're ready to go. You can watch all of these videos in one weekend if you really want to. Uh, I don't expect anybody to do that, but uh, of course, it's, uh, it's all here for when you're ready. Okay. After that is the homework assignments folder. These are all the homework assignments that you're going to have for the class, including the Excel project, which you will download an Excel file from this link. You will upload the finished Excel file back to this link. The due dates are listed in the calendar. They're also available when you just click in. It says this is the first homework. It is due August 31st at midnight. No late submissions uh, will be accepted. Anything you have completed will auto submit at this due date. Uh, um, uh, on the date, uh, so, so at midnight. So if you have gotten in and worked half of the problems and saved it, but then just couldn't have time to get back in, whatever you have done will auto submit. Okay. Please read the instructions on each of these. It's really important that you follow the instructions, particularly with things like uh, uh, rounding and stuff. This is an online homework system that I built, so it doesn't know the difference, for instance, between 12,345 dollars and 12 cents and 12,345. Right. It will count you wrong. You can email me if you have made some rounding mistake and you think that that is uh, uh, you want and, and you think that's why you got the problem wrong. I will go and check. I am happy to give you the point if it is a, a simple rounding mistake. However, I do not want to be doing that a hundred times uh, throughout the semester because you keep forgetting at some point I'm going to cut you off. Right. So I'm not going to kill you for it. Uh, but eventually, I'm not going to um, be your friend about it either. Okay. You will have two attempts on every homework assignment, and these are laid out here. You will get the score for the best of your attempts. Uh, so if you get an 80 on one and a 100 on the next, you'll get the 100. The 80 won't count. Uh, you can take the two attempts however long time you want, how it spread, however you want, as long as they both happen before the due date. After you finish the first attempt, you will be able to click into that attempt and have detailed solutions and explanations for each of the problems. Okay, so spend a lot of time going in there, putting out a detailed solution, saying here's what you should have done, here's the logic behind how that should have worked. When you start your second attempt, you will get mostly the same questions, but they will all, even if it's the same question, have different numbers. So you will have to reattempt the homework uh, using that. That being said, I would hope that if you want to get 100 on these homework assignments, you are able to, right? And I would love it if every single person got hundreds on all the homeworks. Perfect. That's exactly what the point is. I am not trying to hurt you or your score by making you do the homework. But if you do not practice these problems, you will not do well on the exams. Okay? So you'll do all that from here. Uh, this first homework will open up on day one. And then as we go through the topics, the homeworks will open and close. And you can see all of that on the schedule. Likewise, uh, I will have the exams here, right? So this is where you're going to put, I'm going to post uh, review material and the exam links themselves under these headings. So uh, a couple weeks before exam one, I'll post all the reviews and the exam. The exam will be open for that 24 hour period. You'll be able to see it all right here. All right. What's posted right now is the formula sheet that you're going to be allowed to use during the exams. 
and the practice respondents exam, right? So this is going to open up on the first day of class and it will close the day before the first exam. It is a single question. All it is going to force you to do is download the respondents uh, monitor and make sure that everything works fine. Doesn't matter what the question is, I will give you a one extra credit point, and that is the only extra credit I will give in this entire class. If you do the practice respondents exam before the first exam, you'll get a free point. That might be the difference between an 89.1 and a 90, and that's the difference between a B plus and an A. Okay, and I don't round, so this is your one chance to get yourself a free round, basically. So click on this link, download the respondents browser, make sure you're good to go. Do it before the first exam so we don't have any trouble. Okay. Below that is calculator help. Here is all of the stuff that I've compiled to make sure that as you're using the calculators, you have some resources to help you if you get lost or forget. For the TIB82+, there are some examples and guidelines here that I put together for each of the types of problems that we'll do in this class. However, uh, those are also all going to be contained in the video, so you can just go watch the example videos and see the calculator being used in action. For the TI-86 and TI-83 and 84, I have put together some guides telling you how to use the finance functions in those calculators um, so that you can uh, follow along there. Everything that you can do, or that I will show you how to do in the TIBA2+, you can do on the graphing calculators, you just do it in a different way. right? Now it's on you, if you're using the graphing calculators, to find that way, okay? So uh, we have all of this linked here. All of the videos, lecture videos, are linked through these slides, so you can do everything through as you learn. Alternatively, if you are just on YouTube, you can go through the page. This is my official Appalachian University page, right? So it's tied to the university, because uh, we're a Google school. Uh, every faculty member has a channel. You can go to the channel, you can look at the playlists, which are grouped by, say, chapter 12, chapter 9, lectures, chapter 8, example problems. You can go straight to here, you can see the playlist, and you can work through the problems. Uh, so you, these are all the chapter 8 examples um, for the Introduction to Corporate Finance class, which is this course. Uh, so make sure you're looking at the right course, because I have multiple ones. You can watch all the videos, they're all linked here. So for whatever reason, as you learn is down, YouTube is not down, all you got to do is go find my page and you can uh, watch all this stuff, okay? So it's all there for you. Okay, I think that's all I have in terms of introduction and expectations. Uh, I think uh, this class is pretty well laid out for an online course, um, but I would love it if you've got any suggestions, comments, uh, either leave an evaluation or just send me an email or come chat. Uh, I'm always looking for ways to improve this course and to make the uh, experience better for both me and for you. Um, so um, please, of course, uh, reach out to me uh, anytime uh, if you want to meet or have any questions about anything. Uh, that's what I'm here for. Otherwise, uh, expect to hear from me in uh, mostly email form um, as we move through the semester. Um, and uh, hopefully I'll get to meet some of y'all, um, either on Zoom or in person. Um, but, uh, you know, if you never want to talk to me or, or see me, just, uh, just make sure you're doing all the work and turn everything in, and we'll, we'll get along just fine that way, too. Right. So good luck, and uh, hopefully uh, we'll have a great semester.